Hello everyone, welcome to this week's Love Gymnastics Live. Um, hope you are all keeping well. Remember guys, we are using StreamYard, so if you haven't done so already, you are going to need to enable those <clears throat> comments so that I can see them come through. Um, but other than that, I hope you guys aren't working too hard over the summer. I know a lot of us are trying to get in extra training, trying to um, do extra camps, extra squads, all those other kind of things. So um, <clears throat> hope you're not everyone's not overworking themselves too much. But uh, anyway, this week's live, um, we're talking about policy, policies, procedures. Um, which ones do I think are the most important? Which ones I think are you know really important to have do well? Um, and why are they so important? Um, so the one thing I think I need to stress right from the outset of this is that they're in one, they're in no particular order. Um, and two, there are many that I won't mention, but it doesn't mean to say that they're not important. Um, and these are just my opinion. So um doesn't mean to say that these are gospel. These are just the things that I think are good practice, good things that I think we should have. Um, um kind of like my top 10 um if you'd say so <clears throat> first one is the um that i i was going to talk about was privacy policy and data protection or data policy i think with um this is an area where we can all be caught up uh really really quickly uh, and really really easily because we're all so much more aware now of what people um are doing with our data and what people are doing with our information uh, and I think certainly as a club, this is something that we don't want to fall foul of. So it's things like making it quite clear what information that we might share in what situations we might have to share them. Um, you know, it's things like at the moment, have you put a little amendment in there to say that if we get contacted by Track and Trace, we have a legal obligation to share your information that they request and all those other kind of things. Um, I just think it's really important that we make them fully aware of what options and what things we could be um be using their data for and using their um their, their information for so again data policy privacy policy a couple of really important ones um then next one on my kind of my go-to list is uh safeguarding ethics and welfare um i think it's such an important topic uh and i think it's a key area which we need to make sure that we've got support available for both our participants and our staff um things you might want to consider with these sort of policies is is there amendments which apply maybe slightly differently to children than not what do um adults uh, and do you really need another policy for those things or is it something that you could have considerations for in one in one document um you know is there any real need to have two separate ones uh i think along with a safeguarding policy an anti-bullying policy is something that um, it comes hand in hand with those sorts of things. Um, and obviously, a lot of us are probably aware of um, anti-bullying week. And is there something that we might be able to put around um, around that that week where we might be able to look at our policy, make sure that we've got things correctly and make sure we're doing the right stuff? Um, workshops around that area, I think that's a brilliant, um, brilliant idea. Um, Wealth officers or a welfare committee, um, I think it's an integral part of any club, uh, but ensuring that these guys are sort of like a forward facing team. So not someone that's just sat behind and just kept in the dark and no one knows who they are, but having them out and about so people know who they are and um, how who they can contact if there's any situations or any scenarios. Um, and I think when we look at safeguarding ethics, welfare, all those kind of things. I think, and all of these policies, they kind of link really closely with one another. But I think especially those policies are are linked in with your codes of conduct. So codes of conduct, I've, I've come up with sort of like three or four, uh, I think that are quite important codes of conduct. We've got, um, although they're not too different uh, when we talk about these codes of conduct, I think they are areas where they might have some different remits which they need to cover so for example um coaches and directors and trustees they might have a slightly different code of conduct 
although we're both working towards sort of, or they're both working towards like kind of like the same goals, they're trying to achieve the same things, is that the um, the directors and trustees, they might be more focused on ensuring that the policies and procedures are being held, the, the coach is being held accountable to those. And then the coaches might maybe have something in there a bit more about how they're accountable to the participants um, rather than uh, necessarily um, the, the directors. Um, and then obviously the other thing is as well in that one, you've got a code of conduct for participants, uh, parents code of conduct. Um, but I think really important is that all of these kind of code, codes of conduct should link into some of your other policies. Um, you know, so we, another one that I, I'll come on to in a minute is like communication, appropriate communication, when, when you can expect to speak to people, responses and all that kind of, kind of stuff. Um, health and safety. I think is um, a really, really important area, but it can be quite a big document and quite a dry document. So what I found is having um, maybe some key smaller policies within your over your overarching health and safety policy, it makes it easier to you could, to communicate that message. Um, so areas like this might include um, fire uh, and evacuation procedure. Um, that might be included in your health and safety kind of policy. Um, first day guidelines, again, something that you might have you know, sort of separate bullet points um, on, but something that's within your health and safety policy. Um, and I, I put risk assessments under under the umbrella of health and safety because I think they are um, under that. However, I think risk assessing um, risk assessments are such an important part of our policy and our procedures that we do. Um, and I think it's in one of the biggest areas that us as a club um, or clubs can do to help identify risks and then mitigate against those risks to make sure that we're acting in a really safe and proactive way um, for our through our sessions. And then um, kind of coming on to the, the you know the other ones is uh, is communication and a communication policy. Um, you know. I think communication in the last 24 months has moved on leaps and bounds and now the way we communicate has changed and there I think therefore I think it's important there are some rules and some guidance around those for example now with um, the way that the internet and everywhere works people are ever more expecting an instantaneous response um, whereas that's not always appropriate or not always applicable so giving people guidance as to when you're going to be replying and when you're going to be responding to things um, I think that's a really good idea and also Send it, send some ground rules to how people are expected to communicate. Um, and if they don't abide by those, how you're going to deal with those kind of things. So underneath my kind of umbrella of a communication policy, I kind of put some things around a social media policy, um, something about complaints and grievances. So they're brought up in the, in the right manner. And then alongside that is a discipline policy. So it kind of if you make a complaint or a grievance, then these are the kind of processes and things that we would follow. Um, and, and not all of these might be what I would call customer facing policies, but there's maybe things that you might have as a watered down version. Um, and then you'd have a full version in like your employee handbook or your employer handbook. Um, so those, I think the, the, the general umbrella and the kind of areas that I kind of have, have put is my key points are uh, data and privacy uh, kind of policy safeguarding ethics and welfare are another is another umbrella codes of conduct health and safety and communication those are my kind of um, areas of, of, of key points um, but I said even though I said like I was going to do a top 10 I think there's about 15 there that we've just, just I've just kind of brushed over um, and they're in no particular order there is no imp more in one more important than the other I think it's just um, these are some of the things that spring to mind, which I think are really, really good to have to be proactive um, in, within clubs and within club settings. Um, and then another thing that I thought about when I was kind of um, getting ready for today is um, how how often do we need to review these? Are these just something that we do and they sit on a shelf or sit in a poster somewhere and they never get reviewed? So I think um a good kind of rule of thumb is maybe once every 12 months um i would say is what adequate however um should a new piece of legislation come out 
uh, or an amendment from a governing body, then we can't neglect that. That's something that we should then be looking to review within our own policies that we have, have as clubs. Um, or maybe, for example, there's a near miss. Um, if there is a near miss, then we might need to review our policy earlier. Um, or we might need to make an amendment to our policy earlier if, if we identify something. Um, and then there was something that popped up in the group earlier on from um, Joanna, and I think it's a really imperative point. And it's the fact that we don't just have these policies um, that are there. They must be adhered to and implemented. Um, so it's all well and good as having all these you know, really good policies in place. But if we don't take them on board and the staff don't take them on board, participants don't take them on board, members, then they're not going to be used appropriately. And therefore, it's going to cause more issues for us. So I think that is, is a really, really good point that Joanna made there. And it was something that certainly resonates and I, I would have brought up um, as well. So thanks for that, Joanna. And, and I hope you guys have found this a little bit helpful. Uh, maybe, you know, you've forgotten over with everything going on for COVID, thinking, oh, now I need to re review some of my, my things. Maybe it's a risk assessment, you need to review risk assessments or something like that. Just a little jogger like, oh, okay, now I need to go and do this. Um, but what I also thought would be a great idea is if we pop in the comments, if you guys have got any discussion points around different policies, different procedures and stuff, then drop them in the comments of this video and then we can get a chat going to see if we can all help and collaborate and work together with each other. So um, that that's me for today, guys. Hope you've um, hope you found it a little bit useful. Um, and hope you have a great week in the summer. Holidays haven't run away from you too soon. And um, hope you keep well. And I will speak to you all in a couple of weeks time. Thanks very much. Bye for now.